In this lecture and in this complete section, we are going to learn how React works behind the scenes. These concepts are not that important to work with React. However, it will give you a good knowledge of how React actually works under the hood and it will help you become a more confident React developer. In this lecture, we are going to learn about the virtual DOM of React and why we need a virtual DOM when working with React. So if you remember, in our very first lecture, we learned that React is a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. We also learned that React is all about components. React uses components and combine them to compose a user interface. And React also uses components to effectively update the user interface whenever something changes in the component. Now, there are a few points which you need to understand when working with React. When we run a React application, it is not rendered directly in the browser's DOM. So keep this point in mind. React knows nothing about the browser or real DOM. React knows how to work with components, but it does not care whether those component contains HTML elements or custom elements. That does not matter to React. React is just a JavaScript library, which manages components and states. It is also responsible for taking care of how a component might need to change based on a state change or something else. And React is also responsible for checking what differences you might have from the previous state of the component compared to the current state. React only care about components. It care about props, which is basically the data which you pass to a component to make a component configurable and to enable parent child component communication. React also care about states, which is the internal data inside of a component. And when this state changes, React re-evaluates the component function. And React also cares about context, which is component wide state or component wide data. Of course, React also have a couple of other features built in as well, but these are the core features of React. So keep in mind that React is not responsible for rendering something in the browser's DOM. Now React hands over all the informations about what has changed and what should be visible on the screen to the React DOM. React DOM is your interface to your web. And this React DOM is responsible for working with the real DOM, which is nothing but the browser's DOM. And therefore, React DOM is responsible for bringing something onto the screen, which the user is then able to see. So whenever props, state or context changes, components that uses these concepts are updated by React. And React checks whether this component is rendering something new. If that's the case, then React will let React DOM know about these changes so that React DOM will be able to bring these changes onto the screen. So now, Let's take a closer look at components and real DOM communication. And here, let's try to understand how does this actually work. Here, we have a demo component. And in this component, we are returning this JSX. And in this JSX, we have a div element. Inside that div, we have one button element. We have one span element and we have another button element. And here we are also creating a state and we are calling that state count. And we are using this state variable within these span elements. And as I mentioned, React is only concerned about components. It is not concerned about bringing something onto the UI. So at the end, what React does is it uses the concept called virtual DOM. Now, before we talk about virtual DOM, let's try to understand why we need virtual DOM. Why can't React directly communicate with the real DOM? So here for this JSX, the DOM tree will look something like this. So here we have this div node inside that we have two button nodes, one span node, and within that we have this value zero. Now let's suppose that React can directly communicate with the real DOM. So in that case, if the state changes, for example, for this demo component, let's say the user has clicked on this plus button and the value of this count variable has incremented by one. So here the count state has changed. And we have learned that whenever the state changes, React re-evaluates the DOM. That means this component function will be re-evaluated. And when this component function will be re-evaluated, these elements will be recreated. That means in the real DOM, these elements will be re-rendered. This div element will be re-rendered. This button element will be re-rendered. This span will be re-rendered. This button element will be re-rendered. And this value will be also re-rendered with the updated value one. Here, only the value has changed. But since in the component, a state has changed, all these elements have been re-rendered. And this task is quite costly performance wise. So what React does is 
instead of directly communicating with the real DOM, it creates a virtual DOM in the memory. So let's say when this application will be rendered for the first time, in the memory, a virtual DOM tree structure will be created like this. And the same DOM tree will be rendered in the real DOM. Now let's say something has changed in the component. So let's say the user clicked on this plus button and when the user clicked on this plus button, the state changed and the value of this count variable has incremented to one. So again, when the state inside a component has changed, the component function will be re-evaluated and this virtual DOM will be re-rendered. And in this virtual DOM, we will have the updated value. Now, there is a difference between the virtual DOM and real DOM. So now, React DOM will check the difference between the virtual DOM and real DOM. And wherever there will be a difference, that part in the real DOM will be updated. So in this case, the difference is in this value node. So only this part will be updated in the real DOM. And in the real DOM, the complete DOM object will not be re-rendered. Only that part in the DOM tree will be re-rendered, which has changed. And because of this, React applications are very fast and very efficient. And this is the reason why we use virtual DOM for rendering something in the UI rather than directly communicating with the real DOM. This virtual DOM is created in the memory. So the important thing to note here is that we have learned that React will rerun a component function whenever the state changes. So whenever a state, props or context of a component changes, that component function is re-executed by React. But remember that re-evaluating the component does not mean re-rendering the DOM. Just because a component function is re-executed by React does not mean that respective components complete HTML in actual real DOM is re-rendered or re-evaluated. The real DOM is only updated in the place where it needs to be changed. Based on that difference, which React derived between the previous state of the component and its tree and the current state after the state, props or context of the component changed. So the real DOM is not changed all the time. It is changed rarely and only when needed. And this is important for performance because making a virtual comparison between the previous state and the current state, that's fairly cheap and easy to do. And that happens only in the memory. Reaching out to the real DOM that's rendered in the browser is pretty expensive from a performance perspective because working with real DOM is performance intensive task. Of course, if the change is small, in that case, it does not affect performance that much. But if you are making tiny changes at a lot of places, then the real DOM has to update at multiple times and that's performance intensive task. That's why React has the concept of virtual DOM where it compares the difference between a virtual and real DOM and only updates the DOM where there is a difference. So this is all about virtual DOM and how React renders something in the UI. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.